Welcome to the STEM Pathways with Rohan Sharma podcast, where we dive into the exciting world of science, technology, engineering, and math. In each episode, we share exciting stories, groundbreaking research, and inspiring interviews with experts and enthusiasts who are pushing the boundaries of innovation. Whether you're a student, a professional, or just curious about how the world works, join us as we explore the endless possibilities of STEM. Let's get started. Today, I'll be interviewing Navia Mehta, who holds a bachelor's in computer science and finance from the University of Waterloo. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, yeah. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. So to get started, I wanted to ask what your interests were when you were in high school. For sure. So uh, since high school, I always loved just like tinkering with computer science, right? This is everything from like, uh, yeah, trying out for like the national like IOI team back in high school or just building like very simple apps since like I was in like sixth grade, like just love to play around with what it that um, is interesting to me. Now, this is everything from uh, in high school. This was playing around with like Visual Basic, Java and like pretty simple applications to uh, I got to like first year of uni and I'm like, hey, reinforcement learning sounds cool. And I was building all kinds of like gaming agents, like think about uh, like a program that can help you like make the statistically best choice at blackjack every time, for example. And yeah, I mean, my interest in computer science started from just building these smaller projects that I thought were interesting and we just built it up from there. Yeah. So uh, what made you choose your major of computer science? Uh, did you already kind of, were you set on that while you're in high school or do you come to that while you're at university? I think I was pretty set on it in high school. Uh, what attracted me is the ability to build something, right? And what I mean by that is, in my mind, technology is the one way I can have like real asymmetric outcomes. I can, you know, I can build something. I, For example, I, I build an app that can be used by millions around the world. I build, say, a compiler tool that completely defines how we interact with a certain programming language. Like the uh, asymmetry and how much influence you can have is unparalleled. And that's one of like the crazy joys of building something new. And that's why I was pretty set on the fact that uh, I wanted to do computer science in university. Yeah. So what was your experience like at the University of Waterloo? Uh, I actually loved all of my time at university. And the reason for that is uh, it was a really good balance, right? Uh, so I, I'm somewhat like really theoretical. Uh, I had the opportunity to take like upper year, like grad courses pretty early on uh, and truly explore like the areas of computer science that were very interesting to me. This is like statistical ML, like algorithm design and stuff like that. And that kind of early exposure was very interesting, right? Because I was able to do like meaningful work that I found interesting by like second year of uni, like working at my internships and so on and so forth. But at the same time, there's like a really good hacker culture at Waterloo. And what what that really means is like a computer science education is is more than your degree, right? It's like having passion for your craft, so to speak. And um, a shout out to Socratica, if folks know what that is on uh, campus. Uh, it, it's a builders collective at Waterloo that has been like really, really helpful to me. And I'm sure to many others where it really incentivizes you to like identify problems that are interesting and like build real solutions to them. And yeah, there were like a lot of interesting ways I was able to stay involved on campus. Everything from... Um, Waterloo has its own self-driving car team, actually. And we do a lot of, like, perception research to, well, have a functioning car that competes in, like, the GM Challenge. And, uh, yeah, overall, I think it was, like, a brilliant balance between uh, courses that I found hard and interesting and just... Uh, yeah. So, um, what was your, uh, wait, so at the University of Waterloo, I think they have something, I think it's a program that kind of pushes you into internships. Were you part of that? Uh, I was, I was, yeah. It's, it's actually like a pretty common program, uh, in the sense that like most undergraduates by default enroll into it. Uh, it, it kind of like alternates and it switches around like the terms that you're actually at school and it gives you like more time over the year to intern basically and I think that was really helpful because that like 
I had I switched around a bunch, right? Like I knew I wanted to do computer science, but do I want to do data science? Do I want to like just engineer like full stack systems? Do I want to do like machine learning? And a bunch of like internships early on allowed me to like like explore these different things. But I'm sure we'll touch on this uh, soon. Uh, yeah, as out of those internships, what was the most interesting one? Uh, the most interesting internship for me was uh, actually at Grok. Um, this was way back, uh, at least like I think what, like two, three, three years back. Uh, and this was before like, you know, Grok LPUs blew up everywhere and we were like, oh, this is like crazy interest speeds. I was a compiler engineer on Grok's team and I really loved it. And that's actually what sparked my interest in like low level system performance, where uh, my, my work at Grok was getting like a new family of operators, like certain pooling operators and certain like gather scatter reads, like very common high volume operators to be supported uh, in the entire compilation flow. Everything from like scheduling to lowering decomposition, et cetera. And uh, I think the team was fabulous. There was like a lot of interesting learning to do. And the, the product we were building, right, which was a compiler that allows you to run arbitrary models on like Grok proprietary chip. Back then it was called the TSP. Was actually interesting, right? Like there's like real world impact from what you're doing. And I think that is what really led me to my current role as well. I am now at a much earlier uh, stage chip startup building like custom analog chips and i work on like the uh on like the compiler and numerical stability and like the software stack in general and i think a lot of my interest started from the kind of system performance work i was able to do over my internships yeah so um the university of Waterloo, uh through that program how many internships did you end up doing so i actually interned six times over the course of four and a half years and uh, it started all the way in like first year itself. There were there was once where I actually uh, interned like part time over like the course of an entire like study year, so to speak. And uh, yeah. yeah. And um, as how hard was that balancing that with academics? It was pretty hard. I'm not going to lie. Time flew by in university. But I think it's the kind of like where it doesn't feel it is hard, but it doesn't feel grindy because if you actually enjoy it. And I think that's like the subtle difference there, right? Like uh, there is a decent bit of adjustment there why like you're switching between like academics to like you're actually before COVID, right? You were actually traveling to wherever you would work in person. And it was like a good, ex neat excuse to see a lot of the United States and Canada. Um, but there is a decent bit of uh, like moving around, adjusting to it while you're studying, you're like looking for internships, while you're interning, you're like, you know, getting ready for like your next study term. But I, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I think it was like a good mix. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, can you talk a little bit more about your current role? Uh, sorry, could you, could you repeat oh, that? Can you talk a little bit more about your current job? Oh, for sure. So I currently work at uh, Encharge AI. We are a small analog chip company uh, that spun out of Princeton a few years back. And uh, our entire idea is we want to be delivering top level performance for uh, machine learning models to run on the edge at like 1 20th of the energy usage that current, like current incumbents provide, right? So the entire innovation we have is the fact that uh, the, the core of the chip is an analog compute engine. Take analog chips, uh, like there have been like a lot of startups before, but the common point of failure for a lot of them was that it's hard to control analog noise to the point where machine learning uh, accuracy like drops off a cliff. Like if, because in an analog system, you actually have like real noise that's over a distribution. And if like the standard deviation of your noise is too big, or maybe if like, it follows a, a like an eccentric distribution. What you end up with is, uh, hey, I can't actually stay in a sensitive enough model on your chip. And that has been a point of failure for like a lot of chips in the past. And so our innovation is we believe we have like an, the analog noise problem under control. And we can actually deliver a chip that is orders of magnitude more energy efficient 
and i work on the actual like uh, compiler and software stack where we want to be able to take like arbitrary models and build like a truly generalizable software right because winning at the hardware game is not just having the best hardware it's actually like general purpose usability right uh, you you've seen like the kind of cuda mode that nvidia has a lot of people use nvidia systems because well they are easy to use and so uh, a lot of my work is on the software stack we there's a team that works on the actual uh, quantization and like uh, like sensitizing the model to analog so to speak and uh, i work on everything from mapping scheduling allocation uh, down to like like ir design programming model design writing our kernels and so on and so forth with the goal being that uh, we slowly scale up the size of the models we support and we want to be able to run state of the art on our chip yeah so uh what are your future career goals um do you really like the world you're in right now and you think you're going to stay here for a while or oh sorry i think my headphones disconnected um yeah i think i'm going to be in the field for a while and why is i really enjoy working on like the lowest levels of system performance uh when you're working on the compiler right i i have the opportunity to make like two very distinct kinds of uh performance implications on my chip right everything from how do we even think about compiling models that are larger than say some amount of memory or like that exceed some kind of compute threshold but down to how do i optimize individual instructions how how what is the best way to think about like certain types or families of operations when considering the peculiarities of our hardware and i think it's just such a green field to do meaningful performance work uh like you know you you have you have a graph from um the first time we ran a model on our chip what is like the throughput that we had or what was like the percentage of theoretical flops that we were able to use and as we push more optimizations in as we like do more work you see that graph like continuously go up into the right right i mean hopefully go up into the right and i think that is the most satisfaction that like i can get from my work and so to that effect i think i'm going to do this for a while yeah so for my final question i wanted to ask if you have one piece of advice for someone who's still in high school or early in college wanting to follow a similar career path as you so the one piece of advice i have and uh, i i actually noticed this going through like the college application process myself right is that there is a lot of focus on doing things that look nice and when i say look nice is i know like doing extracurriculars that you may not be the most passionate about like doing like say student government doing this and that like things that like make you look like a well-rounded applicant i guess my one piece of advice is find that one spike like find that one thing that like is very very extremely interesting to you right like i i did that to an extent but i hope i i, I hope i was able to do it more Uh, I I know friends who did like like Olympiads when they were in school. I I have friends who went got through college doing like ICPCs and stuff. Like find things that you are super passionate about that you're not doing just to get into a college. And I think that is what like really builds this kind of like love for your craft, so to speak. And that can take people like a long way. Like someone that I really look up to. uh he he's been like tinkering with applications even like younger than me right like he started very very early on spent like all of high school like building products on the side and like i really respect that because that that really builds like true passion for what you do yeah all right then thank you for joining me on the podcast today thank you for having me